Now, I'm going to give you the tube of light decree, the notes for that. I want to show you how a decree can build a spiral. And how when you have a knowledge of a circle, you make a small circle because your eye can encompass it. So, beloved, I am presence bright, around me see a tube of light from ascended master flame. Call forth now in God's own name, let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am clung with violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire, keeping on in freedom thing till I am one with a violet flame. Now there's a reinforcement of an energy coil, and Lord Maitreya speaks of this in his overcoming of fear. That energy coil that we build, either it's one of darkness, of habit that we want to break down, or we are building coils of fire as we give invocation. Now as you know, this coil is actually a spiral, going round and round. Beloved, I am presence bright, around me see your tube of light, from ascended master flame. Call forth now in God's own name, let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me, and, and so on. Now that's the correct use of energy to build a cone of fire. Let's remember that word, building a cone of fire. When you give a decree, you're building a cone of fire. What is a cone of fire? Well, this is what a cone looks like. And your spirals are building inside of this, reaching the apex of the ascension flame. Well, one day you're going to stand in this cone, and the cone of fire that you have built is going to be your momentum to the ascension. This cone <coughs> has 33 turns in it. The 33 steps to the ascension are actually 33 spirals that are built in the base of this cone. The base has a dot in the center. It's the base of a pyramid, if you will, but it's a circle inside of the square of the pyramid or outside of it. You are standing in the center. We're looking like an airplane view down on you standing here. And you're facing the north. And you start building this, the, this uh, cone. It's the ascension cone that you read about in the dossier of Serapis Bay. What I want you to remember is that it has 33 turns. The cone of fire has 33 turns. Now, that is why when you give one decree 33 times, you have set the matrix of the ascension spiral with that flame or that matrix, that decree. But each line of the decree is also a spiral in itself. So it's the same old story of wheels within wheels. If you say that giving the decree once is one spiral, then everything you give in that is like a, a, a complete coil in itself, you see. <coughs> then you go on to the next level, the next decree, and then it has the whole thing together. So whichever way you look at it, you're building a circle of fire with other circles of fire within it. Each word is its own matrix, depending on its syllabalization. So patterns are constantly being formed. Vowel sounds, intonations, all are a part of the building of the cone of fire. Now, a very good exercise for you to practice in visualizing the tube of light and in continuing our discussion of visualization is to imagine that you have a movie screen in front of you. And on this movie screen, you're going to project whatever image is in your head. That movie screen is the screen of your consciousness. But we're going to make a, a concept of the screen of our consciousness being right in front of us, where our eyes and our vision can project. The screen of consciousness. And we're going to project images on that screen. Uh, 
All right, now we have in the chart of the God presence, the Holy Christ self and the four lower bodies, you have a visual image of the tube of light. Now, first of all, can you project an image of yourself on the screen, just like you see yourself in the mirror every morning? In effect, what I'm asking you to do is to project the lower image of the lower figure in the chart of yourself to see that on the screen. If I hold it up here and all of you have the screen in front of you, all you have to do is look at this figure, see the image of yourself as that figure, close your eyes and see it on the screen. Can you try that right now? Now I think when you're doing it, you should say, Mighty I Am Presence, Beloved Holy Christ Self, project the image of my four lower bodies upon the screen of my consciousness. What you're doing when you do that is you let the Christ mind do the work for you. It's no, not a question then of yourself not being able to do it because when as soon as you make the call, the Christ self is doing it for you and then you just look, watch what your Christ mind is putting on the screen. The thing that I want to get across to you is when you're watching a movie or television and you have a screen in front of you, it's a series of pictures flashed flash, 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 flash. You understand? And your eye gets accustomed to see these in sequence, making the whole thing one endless thing and from the beginning of the movie to the end. Well, that's what your life is. And as Moria Lanello said at the Freedom 1973, when you get to Moria's retreat, you'll sit back in, the, in your chair and you'll watch these scenes of former lives played as a movie on this screen. And the screen is the screen of your consciousness. It's the screen of the master's consciousness focused there in the etheric plane. Now I want you to practice the exercise of feeling your mind throwing an image on that screen. Imagine yourself taking some kind of a, a, a piece of mud and throwing it at that screen. That's the swiftness I want you to have when you throw with your mind. Now let's take in our hands visually a big clump of violet flame and throw it at that screen on, on the vision of yourself. Does everybody see himself standing there now? <coughs> okay, now we're gonna take the substance of the violet flame, we say in the name of Almighty God, in the name of my Holy Christ self, blaze the full power of the violet flame on the screen of my consciousness around my four lower bodies. Flash it on now, throw it on, and there it appears. Now throw around it the exact image of the tube of light that you see in the, in the chart. By the projection of your mind, throw it. In the name of Almighty God, in the name of my Holy Christ Self, I call for the tube of light to be placed around the violet flame around my four lower bodies as the image on the screen of my consciousness. Now each line of this tube of light decree is an image that you flash on. Everything we say, we visualize it and flash it onto the screen. All right, we say, Beloved, I am presence bright. Instantaneously, you see the image of your I am presence. Just as it's pictured in this chart, you don't have to get every detail. You say, I am presence. You know it's a blazing sun center. It's a sphere of white fire. If you can see enough to see rings around it, fine. But the very fact that you're invoking it, God will perfect the image on your screen if you ask him to do it. This is the great thing about visualization, that we don't have to be responsible for every detail that we're going to throw on this screen when we say, in the name of my mighty I am presence and holy Christ self, I ask that every line of this decree of the tube of light be emblazoned now on the screen of my consciousness in image form by my own mighty I am presence and holy Christ self. Now you do the best you can to get the maximum image, color, light, sound onto that screen. Okay, every time I, I say flash, after a line, you flash what I just said on that screen. I'll say it because you're going to be involved in throwing it. Beloved, I am presence bright, flash. Round me seal your tube of light, flash. 
From Ascended Master Flame, see a giant flame from the Ascended Master's octave whirling and descending right on that screen upon your image. Call forth now in God's own name. When I say that, you should flash on the screen blazing fiery letters of God's name. God's name is I am or it's I am that I am. I prefer to see I am that I am. Big, blazing, fiery letters like the fire and the filament of the light bulb. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. Now you see the fire intensify, sealing you in light. Don't visualize discord. Visualize an intense action of the fire. I am calling for violet fire flash. See that blazing violet flame in the center of the tube of light. It's moving, it's alive, it's dancing. To blaze and transmute all desire, flash. Now when you say that, see the flame blaze and penetrate your electronic belt, your four lower bodies. All desire patterns are consumed by the violet flame. In addition to visualizing it, you know that it is done. Keeping on in freedom's name till I am one with the violet flame. Flash. You just see the action of violet flame intensifying. When you say keeping on in freedom's name, you have the feeling of God determination intensifying within the image. Till I am one with the violet flame, that oneness where you become the flame. Now see yourself absolutely disappear within the flame that you're visualizing it. The flame is getting so bright and so big that all you can see is the fire now and you are locked inside of it. Now in the name of Almighty God, we call directly to the heart of beloved El Moria, the Christ self of each one here, to intensify the action of the eye magic of visualization upon the screen of consciousness of each one. I call to the Christ self of each one to intensify the action of the third eye to blaze the image of right useness, righteousness upon the screen of consciousness. I'm going to say it again and give the flash. Beloved, I am presence, bright flash. Around me, see your tube of light flash. From ascending master flame flash. Call forth now in God's own name flash. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire, flash. To blaze and transmute all desire, flash. Keeping on in freedom's name till I am one with the violet flame, flash. That screen for this decree is never again in your life going to be white or clear. When you turn to this decree, you've already got all your patterns set up. It's like you're going to a familiar place. You've created a force field of your consciousness. So every time you give the decree, it's already set up. You've already taken this motion picture. You're just playing the reel again. So you don't have to do the thing all over again because it's already there. It's part of now, it's part of your memory <coughs> bank or your etheric body of patterns. And as you, as you become more facile with the use of those patterns, they'll, they'll appear almost before you say the decree because your whole consciousness is expectant. The reason I'm doing it in front of you is because I want to develop the uh, point of visualization. It's a different type of exercise and it has a very important worth. It gets you uh, to the point of objectifying light. I mean, you can change the image of that person on your screen to anybody you know for healing purposes. We've been doing a lot of this around ourselves, so that's why we're doing it Everything I teach you, I try to give you some new aspect of the law so that when you view it alone, you can, you can put all or parts of it together. But this, this is a very important exercise. Moria says this is an exercise he gives in his retreat. He's telling me that now. You're getting an exercise that the, the Chohan of the first ray insists that his disciples master in the retreat of God's will. And they have to be able to flash these images. The first sentence is just the presence. Then it says, round me, see your tube of light. So you go right into the flash of you. Now you're not even visualizing the Christ self here, 
but you may have meditated on the chart so long that it falls right into place. But you'll notice we didn't even mention the Christ. We haven't gotten, we've gotten that in because we're doing exactly what the decree says. What you're doing, you're creating the thought form of the decree. That thought form becomes a kernel in your consciousness, just like a little almond. Okay, here's this little kernel now. It's a seed. Inside that kernel is this whole coil of energy that you have created by an image and by a decree. Now, each time you come back to this decree, that particular kernel in your consciousness, it's a seed of light. It's a matrix. The whole thing will unfold and manifest there for the duration of your giving that decree. And each time you give the decree, you're packing that kernel with more and more light. And it becomes a weapon of light to use for good, for expanding God's consciousness. Now, you see these pictures of the thousand-petal lotus. Each petal on the lotus flower is a kernel of light, of mastery of the Buddhic consciousness. Well, how do you think you get that petal of light? That same little almond I just drew is like a petal in the thousand-petal lotus flame. How do you think attainment is won? It's won by mastery of these little steps and stages of the law. It's very scientific. And the process is step by step, line upon line, precept upon precept, as the prophet said. <coughs> and it, it keeps adding. First you see the presence, then the tube of light. You see the action of flame working with your presence of from ascended master flame. In other words, from the ascended master octave, light is descending. You can see it as a big waterfall descending. Called forth now in God's own name. I am that I am, an image on top of it. Let it keep my temple free from all this good sent to me. While you're doing that, you have to take the time to intensify the image of the tube of light around your person, especially the lower portion of yourself and under your feet. Build up the image. I am calling forth violet fire, blaze and transfer all desire. That's the time to see those flames laughing and leaping and hear them crackling. Keeping on in freedom's name to line one with the violet flame. I, I've experienced this periodic strain of the third eye as, as I go up in increments of initiation. And when that occurs, you should just abandon the use of the third eye and not visualize from your head, but feel the energy going out from your heart as your heart chakra. Just relax and let, let your holy Christ self project the energy from the heart to create these things. The thing is, really, what you're supposed to be able to do when you master this is to sit back and watch the picture because it has then become automatic and you're in tune with your Christ self. Your Christ self is running the projector and you're sitting there meditating on these images. Now, see, what I'm leading to you to, I'm leading you to the place where I'll hold up here a picture of Saigon and I'll say... I'll uh, give a decree, lovely God presence I am in me, flash, and you'll flash your I am presence over Saigon. Round me see your two of light, flash, and then you'll put whatever I say, and I'll say, blue lightning bombs descend, and you'll all see blue lightning bombs descending on this screen. That's group dynamics for zeroing in on any place on the globe, your visualizations. So we're starting small, we're starting simple. <coughs> I want to take everybody with me. I want to do it step by step because I can assure you that this is the path to becoming an avatar. You have to be able to project yourself anywhere on earth for catastrophe, for cataclysm, and instantly have this ability flash. Okay, I'm going to take the two of light once more. Beloved, I am presence bright. Flash. Round me see your tube of light. Flash. From ascended master flame, call forth now in God's own name. Flash. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. Flash. I am calling with violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire. Flash. Keeping on in freedom's name till I am one with the violet flame.
Okay. Essentially what we've done is project this picture step by step without the Christ self on the screen of the mind. When you master it, it becomes a question of putting that screen, projecting, for instance, on this screen, there's a scene of a mountain and a lighthouse. Now you might decide to paint on your screen a picture of Peking. Take your pictures out of National Geographic, a real picture that you find. You memorize, you know, not total memorization, but you see the buildings, you see the general layout of a city. You turn it over to your Holy Christ self. You say, Holy Christ self, project the image in full detail of all the streets, the whole full vibratory pattern of Hong Kong on that screen. So that's already there as a background. Then you throw this on on top of it. And your I am presence becomes the guardian action of that city as long as you maintain your invocations. Now you see that the promise that we read about in Climb the Highest Mountain on Friday about the Lord promising that he would be a wall around the city of Jerusalem and the glory in the midst thereof. Well, how does God be this except through man? God isn't anybody without man, right? We're the objectification of God's self-awareness. Without us, God isn't aware of himself. So it's God always through man, through angels, through an elementals, that focuses an aspect of his consciousness. So if God promises he's going to be this wall of light or the tube of light around the city and the glory in the midst, the violet fire, then we want to be that because we want to be like our God. We want to be the instrument for God's doing that. Now this crisis comes up on the Suez Canal. See when you have the facility of the mind, you go in your newspaper, you get out the map. You get the Memorize the location, the map, see where it is. Another newspaper will show you the area of fighting. It'll show you a picture of the cities or the plains or whatever it is. You throw that on the screen, put your tube of light on top, and you're off. Focusing energy where it's needed. Can you remember a picture you saw in the newspaper this morning or yesterday? You can remember a picture. Well, then you have a mental image. All you've got to do is take your memory of that image and focus it at this point in front of you where you are doing your work or your visualization. You all attend movies, so you all ha definitely have the matrix of a moving picture screen in front of you. And instead of seeing what, the, what they show in the movies, you're going to see what you remember that needs correction in the world and what you remember of God's images. You see a vision of yourself doing something that you didn't like yourself to do. Or you have a flashback on a very terrible movie or a terrible traumatic experience you had. Now what you do, you must be extremely careful with this. You don't want to turn that image off and suppress it because it's just like driving it down into your electronic belt when you do that. If you're seeing an image of the past, it's one of two reasons. Either the dark forces are condemning you for that experience and trying to play it on your mind like a player piano. They sit and play the thing all day long, all day long, all day long to drive you mad with self-condemnation. Or the alternative to that is that it's time for this record to go into the flame. It's part of that little pack on your back that was released for the day, your karmic allotment for the day. And it's time for it to be put in the flame. In either case, it needs to be consumed. All right, so you put up your screen, you let it play. But while it's playing, you are giving the violet flame and blazing the violet flame over that image on the screen. You can't see the image anymore. You've got so much violet flame projecting. You can give the, the violet fire and tube of light decrees that you've got right here. You can give anything you have a momentum on. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. Very good. You don't have to do a lot of thinking about words with that one. And see that violet flame right on that screen? And it's blazing, crackling, burning, and pretty soon, by a willing of your mind, you are willing yourself to see the flame in front of this thing until it is completely consumed. 
Now, the violent fire action, which begins Jesus' mission, as I mentioned, is the marriage feast in Cana of Galilee. The tube of light example, where Jesus has the tube of light around him, can be found several times. It says uh, that Jesus disappeared from their midst. It says that the crowds were ready to stone him and push him off the cliff. And that is an example of the protection of the tube of light intensified to the point of levitation. Jesus actually, what he did inside his tube of light, he dissolved the physical aspect of his being, disappeared actually physically, levitated within the thing and went right up just like a flying saucer. His tube of light was his little flying saucer and off he went. And that's what you can do with the tube of light, with that simple visualization starting with that section. You can go all the way, all the way to the place where you're, you're floating in the air inside your tube of light because you see your tube of light keeps out everything including the gravitational pull of the earth. It makes you a globule of white fire floating in the earth being you walk the earth you're in the earth but you're not of it in this world but not of the world inside your tube of light and that's truly how you are but that tube of light is your force field where you can be all over the world and never be burdened by the oppressive negative energies of the world now the forgiveness decree section C on the next page that example is uh, thy sins be forgiven thee. The healing of people through the forgiveness of sin. You can take the example of the adulterous woman as that example where Jesus, they were going to stone the adulterous woman. Now in the fourth chapter of Luke, Luke 4, colon, 28, and all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. Isn't that something? The great challenger is our Jesus. Didn't even phase him at all that they were going to throw him off. You know what's interesting to me? He didn't disappear when they, when they were filled with wrath. He let them lead him all the way up, in, up into the brow of the hill to get ready to do it so it would impress them more. And I constantly see this in the life of Jesus, how he is this great dramatist, making the maximum use of every situation to leave a record. I mean, nobody would have ever noticed if, if he just disappeared when they got angry in the synagogue. But he lets them take them. Rose up, thrust him out of the city, let him, can't you see this scene? <laughs> let him up into the brow of the hill, and their city was built that they might, I mean, this whole big mob is pushing this poor little meek little man, you know, who's really not meek. And then, then he does his, his, uh, his big stunt here. And he comes down, and he goes right on teaching on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Okay, so that's for the forgiveness decree. Now remember the action of the forgiveness flame is a pink violet. The marriage feast is the first three, the violet fire. I'm going to find you some other examples of violet fire in Jesus' life. The heart, head, and hand action of Jesus' violet flame in alchemy. Remember I said that everybody's mission starts with the action of alchemy. Alchemy begins the mission of every avatar, and that alchemy is the changing of the human into the divine. And so that's what you learn from these hard head and hand decrees, that your mission doesn't start until the action of alchemy starts, the water of the human consciousness into the wine of the Holy Spirit. Now this is a good, very good action of violet flame for the forgiveness decree. Okay, when you say I am forgiveness acting here, that here is on the screen. You've got your image built, your I am presence, your force field, yourself standing in the flame and the tube of light. Everybody has got that anyway as a mental idea, right? 
You've all got it as an idea in your mind. Do the best you can. Don't be discouraged and don't, don't stay behind. Go ahead and project this. Now when I say I am forgiveness acting here, flash, you flash this color. Try to flash color. Throw it. Throw it right onto the screen <laughs> as an image. I am forgiveness acting here. Flash. Casting out all doubt and fear. The flame comes in and out comes darkness. It's casting out. You can just see the demons flee, the thought forms flee, all the dark things, whatever one of those cycles of energy you may be seeing from your past coming up, and it's just cast out. Setting men forever free with wings of cosmic victory. Now, who are these men that are set free? What happens is you have ties to people all over the planet through karma. Through past action, you have created ties. You have wronged people, and because you have wronged them, they are weighted down by the burden of your consciousness. St. Germain said after he ascended, he saw a man somewhere in the British Isles toiling as a farmer in the field, all bent over, all burdened, his spine all crooked from the weight was it the weight of his physical labor? No. In some past life, many, many, many years ago, St. Germain found that he had wronged that man. So he looked down. He flashed exactly in the same manner when I say flash, you flash on the screen. He flashed to him an abundance of his momentum, a violet flame. Suddenly the man leaped up in the field, stood up straight, was rejoicing and happy, of course didn't know why, but he was freed from the burden of the wrong that had been done thousands of years before. Now when you say setting men forever free with wings of cosmic victory, you are, are sending the violet flame that you now have imaged here. All points on the globe, wherever there is a person that is bowed down, weighted down by something you have done or said. Sometimes we don't realize how little words are cutting and how they smart and how they hurt people. In a moment of anger or in a moment of envy or jealousy, we make some remark, it goes into the subconscious of a, of a person, warps their personality, they carry a burden for years. And then you find you are tied to that person. So when you say setting men forever free, Whenever you set someone else free, you're setting yourself free because you're now cut from them. You no longer have a debt. They say hatred binds and love frees. Hatred binds because there's a karmic tie that has to be settled sometime, somewhere. Whereas what if you just plain love, you give out love and you get love in return. If it's not possessive, you're not going to be possessed. Okay, so... Setting men forever free with wings of cosmic victory. Now you can visualize portions of the flame like fireworks going out from the center of the screen and landing as balls of fire, of, of violet fire, forgiveness, wherever they have to. In the name of Almighty God, we turn over to our Christ self, the distribution of this Mercy's flame wherever it is required across the planetary body. I am calling in full power. You see an intensification of action. You're affirming that you're calling. Full power, if you want to go into the visualization, full power is always blue. You can see a surging of blue fire coming up in the middle of, of this violet flame activity. I am calling in full power for forgiveness every hour. Now when you master the clock every hour, you, you actually see this violet flame sweeping around the chart of the hours for one full 24-hour cycle. You see that violet flame completing that cycle within you. So right now your call that you're giving at this very moment by your visualization is going to be effective for the 24-hour cycle because all you have to see is a sweep of violet flame around this image you have in your mind, a recollection. The great thing about all of this is that the higher mind, which is the Holy Christ Self, is doing it all in answer to your call. And just remember that the Christ is the doer in you, 
on this visualization. To all life in every place, I flood forth for giving grace. Now you can put your memory of the globe. The globe you had in your classroom in school, you know what it looks like. It spins, it's got blue ocean, colors of countries. You remember what the United States looks like, Africa, Australia, big continent of Russia. Okay, to all life in every place, I flood forth for giving grace. So this globe is suspended in the violet flame that you have projected on your screen. So your whole screen is filled with this mercy flame and you've put in it what we said here. Now, when we said setting men forever free with wings of cosmic victory, Manello just asked me to please give you one of his favorite thought forms that he loves to visualize. He has a momentum on this visualization. Now you're gonna create thought forms of your own on which you will have momentums. Just be sure they're perfect and they're composed of the geometry of God. All right, this is a globule of mercy's flame that's coming out of this big fire when we say, setting men forever free with wings of cosmic victory. So we have this big fire going on our screen here. We're standing in the center of it. We see ourselves there. We want to see coming out of here globules of violet flame that are setting men forever free with wings of cosmic victory. So all these, these miniature globules are going to go out, and each one has a mark. Each one is sent by our Christ self to someone somewhere that must be cut free for us to ascend. So the way that this globule is going to get there, it's going to get there because it has wings of cosmic victory. <laughs> and this is the thing Mark likes to visualize, is these, these uh, thought forms with wings. You know, angels have force fields of scintillating fire that people and artists have portrayed as looking like wings. And they say angels have wings, and people who don't believe in angels say, can you imagine such a ridiculous thing as a, you know, a being with wings like birds? And actually, these pinions, pinion is another word for wing, are composed of, of fire. And they're instruments of locomotion, which the angels are entitled to have if they want them. They're a, for, they're a force field of fire. It's just like we're entitled to wear the clothes we want to wear and the hairstyles we want to wear. The angels notoriously have these pinions. I would like to ask you, however, backing up a little bit here, to give the tube of light and forgiveness to Cree, each one three times with me, and then we'll go on. Do as much flashing on your screen as you're able to, as you say it. That's the purpose of giving it. Together. Beloved, I am presence bright. Around me seal your tube of light. From ascending master flame, call for thou in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am for forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire, keeping on in freedom saying, till I am one with the violet flame. Be thou that I am risen bright, around me seal your tube of light, from ascended master flame, hope for now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am called for violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire, keeping on in freedom saying, till I am one with the violet flame. Beloved, I am presence bright, round me seal your true of light, from ascending master flame, call forth now in God's own name, let me keep my temple free, from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire, keeping on in freedom, saying, well, I am one with a violet flame. Now I want to explain to you about this transmuting all desire. It's obviously human desire. I want to explain to you that the path of desirelessness is very scientific. When you are free from all desires, your consciousness is a vacuum. There's nothing in it of desire. It's just like the example I gave you of getting all the air out of your system. Then you don't have to take a breath because it automatically fills up, right? It's a perfect example of desirelessness. When you are free of desire, you create a vacuum, and the law states that God must fill the vacuum. The whole being of the Holy Spirit must rush in to fill the 
void. When you desire, you create a force field of repulsion. You repel the thing that you desire. When, you, when you're pulling it toward you, the unnatural reaction is it's going to pull the other way. So you don't have desire, you have thought forms. You have beautiful images which you memorize. A snowflake, a raindrop, a rose. And you just have joy in maintaining these images on your screen. Just like yourself standing in the violet flame. There's no feeling, oh, I've got to get it. I've got to get that violet flame. I've just got to have that tube light. <laughs> you know, you don't have that feeling at all. It's just the natural flow of that thing on the screen. And it appears. It comes effortlessly. So, if you have your consciousness full of the images of God, they naturally attract God's energy. They are a magnet for more of their kind. So we want to be free from desire, especially those desires we don't even know we have. We don't even know we have desires. They're all locked up in, in this burgeoning energy of our subconscious, which is released every now and then. So you watch this desire thing and analyze desire patterns. If in your heart and soul you have decided to be free from eating sweets or chocolates, cigarettes, drinking or whatever it is you've decided you're finished with, it's over with, and then all of a sudden a couple weeks later you feel these momentums, realize that there are subconscious spirals that Maitreya talks about every time you've indulged in this particular habit. It's one coil around the pole of your being, which is like your spinal column. You're winding this energy around. Each cigarette you've smoked is another coil. And once you decide that you're not going to have this, you've taken the first step in unwinding one of these. But you've got to unwind each one. Each one of these has to be undone until the whole thing collapses. Now, that's not the only way of doing it. You can build up such a momentum of intensity of your coil inside this cone going the other way of fire. But this thing is created and it reaches uh, this crescendo or this critical mass and it contacts this and the whole thing goes poof. And the whole coil of years and years and years of a habit pattern is just dissolved by your momentum of decree. Remember one thing, if you've never visualized before, when you are decreeing, your Christ self is doing everything I've told you to do this morning. What I'm trying to do now is get anchored in your outer mind what your Christ selves have been doing since you came into form, visualizing all these things for you. So as soon as you tie into that higher mind, it will do vast work for you. Supply all your needs, do everything. You go into your heart, visualize the white fire core, the threefold flame, energy blazing in the heart, and then you can see uh, a sphere of, of light coming out from the heart and doing this. See, we tend to feel that visualization is an action of the mind, the third eye. But I can put out an image from any of my chakras. I can visualize with my throat. It's just a habit that tells you the only thing that a throat is good for is to speak. <laughs> it's just a habit. Just put out a thought form of Blu-ray from your throat on your screen and there it'll be. It's just like people that write with their feet, you know. <laughs> Take their toes and they hold a pencil. <laughs> 